So I want to get the quail cage done today because I want to get to work in the quail room. Once I get the babies moved into the cage I'm building for them, I'm going to start building a new breeder cage as well. So the first thing that I have left to do is to still put the top piece of screen on. Uh, I am going to run a couple uh, boards across just for some support. Uh, I'm also going to uh, build a support that I can set uh, a five gallon bucket on top of for the watering system. The second thing that I have to do on it today is hook up the watering system. So I have my uh, five gallon bucket. Um, I already installed the uh, spigot on the bucket. And then I have my actual waterers. These are the kind that I really like, these little cups. And I've hooked up this uh, piece of PVC with nine of them on. Uh, which really is a lot more than I need, but I'd rather give them more than less. These are in our Amazon shop if you guys want to take a look at them. I like them for two reasons. One, they work really well, and they're super inexpensive. I think for 12 of them, I paid like $7. So I'm going to put those along the back, and then we're going to get the top put on. So the final thing for me to do on this is to put the wire on the top. I'm gonna to use the same wire that I have on the rest of it, the half inch by half inch wire. Uh, one thing that if you guys haven't invested in, if you're doing much of anything with this uh, type of wire, if you don't have a good end cutting uh, wire cutters, this thing is the tool that you wanna get so that you do not end up with sharp edges all over. Uh, invest in one of these, they're like 10 bucks. All right, we're gonna get going. Uh, again, it's uh, eight feet long, so I'm gonna just roll out eight feet of wire and get it stapled on. Got the quail cage in, it fits. It fit through both doors. Uh, I had kind of a freak out moment last night when I was sitting inside on the couch thinking, I hope I didn't make that too wide to get out the greenhouse door, but it fits. So um, we got it moved in. I'm gonna hook up the watering system, move over the feeders and that type of thing, and then it'll be time to move the quail over. Well, I've got the youngest quail moved into the new cage. I think there's uh, 15 of them that I moved over there. This will be where they grow out now until they are uh, old enough to either uh, become breeders or old enough to go into the freezer. So uh, the last thing that I want to do is uh, try to build a new feeder for the quail. Uh, I've tried several different kinds and they work okay, um, but there seems to still be a fair amount of waste from them. Uh, let me show you the two kinds that I'm currently using and tell you why I want to try to improve upon them. So the first version is this kind here. Uh, this kind uh, is actually the kind I think that's working the best as far as the amount of waste. Uh, the problem with them in, and really the, the main drawback to this system is that you can't put very much feed in at a time. Uh, you have to leave it a, at least, in my experience, a half inch below the bottom of that hole, uh, otherwise the quail will waste. Uh, when quail eat, they tend to put their head in the food, take a mouthful of food, and then fling their food everywhere by shaking their head, and food goes everywhere. And since, believe it or not, quail feed is actually the most expensive feed that we have on the homestead, uh, when I see it just being flung all over the ground, I'm not very happy about that. So I'm going to try to make a hybrid version of this uh, 
a system today and see if that will help reduce on the feed cost. But let me show you the other one that I'm using and tell you why I'm not going to stick with that one. So the second system is this one here. And I made this because I have a big version of this that I made for the chickens and it works really, really well. Um, the problem is for the quail, they're still wasting quite a bit of feed. You know, again, you can see when this one's eating, hopefully you can see on the video just how much feed is being flung out and onto the ground. So I've been researching all kinds of different feeders and I think I've come up with a plan to make one that will uh, hopefully reduce waste. I'm going to make just one to start with and then if it works well I'll make another. But let's go to the greenhouse so I have things set up in there so we can get to work. Alright so we're in the greenhouse. It's nice and warm in here again today. Uh, much nicer than outside. So I've got a little workbench made up here. I'm going to show you how we're going to make this feeder. Now, uh, again, I've watched several videos and I've kind of take, taken bits and pieces from several different videos into and make this into what I think is going to be a great feeder. So, uh, uh, let me go over the different parts that we're going to use first. The first thing we need is just a cheap um, plastic bin from Walmart. These were 97 cents. These are the same kind that I'm using currently in there for the quail. Um, so, uh, the cheaper the better. As far as I'm concerned, the quail aren't going to care one bit. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is some one and a half inch uh, PVC pipe. Uh, I've already cut these into three quarter inch wide uh, rings. I'll show you what those are going to be for in a little bit. Uh, we're also going to need some four inch uh, PVC pipe. Um, again, uh, PVC pipe can be pretty expensive when you start to get into this bigger stuff. So uh, this is sewer pipe, which is uh, a lot less expensive. Cost me $10.50 for a 10 foot piece of it so about a dollar a foot which is pretty good uh, as far as tools uh, we're going to need uh, two different hole saws a four inch hole saw and a two inch hole saw uh, a hot glue gun and then our drill and a tape measure and some sh and a sharpie so uh, not a whole lot to this uh, let's go ahead and get started so the first thing we're going to do now on mine, I'm only going to put feeding holes on one side because I'm going to have this up against the side of the cage. Uh, I'm going to put four feeding holes in this one. If it ends up working out well, I'll build a second one of these to put in that big cage as well. Uh, so it'll be eight holes. So for now, I'm just going to put holes on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes to start. All right, so I've got all four holes uh, drilled in there now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my pieces of PVC that I had cut, and I'm going to hot glue them in there. All right, so I've got those all glued in. Now I'll admit, the holes that I drilled were just a little bit too big for the PVC pipe that I had. So I really had to put on a lot of hot glue. <laughs> uh, if the holes would have been tighter, I probably could have gotten away with less, but it does seem to have really held them in place well. So I'm gonna let that dry and then just uh, make sure I have any little pieces that are hanging around uh, kind of cleaned up so the quail don't eat any of it. But once that's dry, we'll move on to the next part of the project. All right, so we're gonna get ready to drill the hole in the top to put the four inch PVC. But I wanted to show you guys something that I changed my mind about. I thought about it more while I was letting that glue dry about only having the holes on one side. My fear with only having them on one side and then having this against the edge of the cage is that when those tubes are in there, um, eventually feed is going to go all the way around the feeder. Um, but if there's only holes on one side, they're never going to be able to get that food on the back side. So instead, I am going to have holes on both sides. So I've so I've glued in the PVC on, on both sides, and I'll have this uh, kind of in the middle of the cage so they can eat from both sides. I think it'll just work out better. So anyway, uh, that's the way I'm doing it. So the next thing we're going to do is drill the holes in the top for the four inch uh, PVC. You're gonna need a uh, either a four inch hole saw or you could cut it by hand with a hot knife or something like that if you want. 
Um, the way I'm going to do it is with a hole saw. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up uh, the hole saw so that it ends up so the center of this hole is in between the two feeders on each side. I'm going to have two holes in the top. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to line that up and trace it. Don't do this on your kitchen table. Your wife won't be happy. There we go. Two holes. All right, so now it's time to drill the hole in our, or drill the holes in our four inch PVC. I've already cut a piece of this to two feet just because it's gonna be easier to work with a short length. Uh, we're gonna end up with two one foot tall pieces. Uh, the reason I went one foot tall is because that's how tall our cage is. And I want this to go all the way up to the top of the cage. So uh, if this ends up working, what I'll do is actually cut holes in the top of the cage so that I can uh, feed from the outside of the cage. You can make them taller or shorter if you'd like. So I drew a line all the way around this at one foot. I'm gonna use a two inch hole saw and I'm gonna drill four holes around here and then we'll cut this in half. Um, the center of the hole will be right on that line so that there's half of a hole on each piece of the PVC pipe. All right, I've got my holes drilled, except once again, I changed my mind. After looking at the size of the holes, I've decided to only drill two holes uh, so that there's one on each side of the pipe uh, facing the, you know, one facing each side of the uh, feeder. So I don't want too much feed to come out at a time or we'll be right back in the same boat where they can have, you know, too much and fling it all around. If I feel like I want more later, I can always come back and at least cut, you know, I might not be able to cut another circle because it'll be hard once this pipe is cut in half, but I can cut some type of opening if I feel like I need to let more feed out. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So now I'm gonna cut this pipe in half. All right, so those are cut. I'll just take my pocket knife and trim off any little pieces of plastic that are on there. And then we'll be ready to install these onto the lid. All right, so I've got the lid. Now, the holes that I drilled in the lid are just a little tight on these uh, pieces of PVC and I knew that they would be uh, but I my options because of the size of hole saws that I have are either was either a little tight or way too big so uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually use my uh, heat gun if you guys don't have one of these I use this I didn't think I'd ever use a heat gun but now that I have one I've had it for several years already but after I got one, I use this thing all the time and I think I paid like $8 for it at Harbor Freight one time when they had them on sale, but this thing is awesome. So I'm gonna just heat up the lid, uh, the plastic on the lid a little bit, and then I think it'll slide right over. All right, there we go. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we've got the four inch PVC installed in the cover. Let's go ahead and put that on to the bottom. Now putting that PVC through did you know, warp the top just a little bit, but it still fits nice and tight. So I think that looks good. I think it's gonna work great. Again, you don't want them to have a lot of room in there, just enough to put their head in and eat. Uh, the only thing looking at it, now I haven't tried it yet, so the only thing looking at it is there's not a lot of room between the edge of the pipe and the edge of the thing. So I would say either uh, maybe go down to a three inch pipe or get a little bit wider container. Uh, but we're not gonna know till we take it over and try it in the quail, so let's do that right now. All right, so I'm over in the quail room. Uh, let's go ahead and add some feed to this and then we'll 
uh, put it in. Now for now, I'm not going to cut holes in the top of my cage until I know if this is going to work. Uh, so it's probably going to be a little cumbersome to get uh, in and out. So I'm not going to fill it super tall because I'm probably going to have to, uh, you know, tip it on its side to get it in and out because our cage is only a foot tall. So um, I'm only going to fill it a little ways until we know if it works. And then if it ends up working, I'll cut holes so I can feed right through the top of the cage. All right, so there you go. I've got the feed in there. Let's put it in and see what the quail do. And of course, they're already trying to eat, but out of the side that I'm not recording on. Well, they are definitely already using it. It's only been in there for a couple minutes, and they're already loving it. They're getting a, they're getting a lot of food out of it. Uh, I haven't seen any food fall down to the bottom. I'm actually going to put a piece of cardboard underneath the, their cage tonight so that uh, in the morning I can kind of judge. But I've just been watching, and I haven't seen a single piece of food fall. So to me, that's very encouraging. So I think this is going to be a great system. Uh, I'm sure I'll make a few different versions of it over time, but for a first prototype, I think this is a really good uh, system. I would encourage you guys to try it or maybe improve upon it. Let me know if you do. So I hope you enjoyed uh, spending some time again with me today, uh, finishing up the quail cage, moving them over, and then building this new feeder for them. Uh, I'm really loving having the quail. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm glad that I'm finally starting to get more into it. I'll be bringing you guys along as I learn more uh, all the time. If you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to uh, check us out on all of our other social media as well. And until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.